Everyone, hi. Thank you for watching. This is Bruce Mumpson, LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada. Okay, who am I? First of all, we want to thank our sponsor today, Natural Grocers. Good for you. They generously gave us their room to shoot in, and we are going to present to the crowd here today traumatic brain injury because we want to explain what goes on inside that brain when an injury does happen. Now, who am I? My name is Bruce Muffson. I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I have over 20, 25 years God almost experience, and I've treated thousands of patients from 3 to 83 from a variety of situations, in-home, uh, outpatient, inpatient. I've done hundreds of times. I've been, you know, gone to court, testified, worked with all kinds of people, those who have been incarcerated, uh, adolescents. I work with young adults, elderly, you name it, I've done it. So from the course of doing all these lectures and all these evaluations and all this working with patients, came to the realization that I wanted to do some teaching, explaining various things to the public about mental health. Now, what is Sunridge of Nevada? Sunridge of Nevada was formed over four years ago with myself and my, I always use the same expression, my agent slash producer slash bottle washer. He does everything for me. Great guy. And we wanted to take videos and we took three topics. We took music, movies, and sports to break down clinically. And since that time, we've done over 100 videos. We've done live streams. Uh, we've done presentations. And now this is the first time we're doing actually something in this setting. So we're excited to be here. Now, what is our interest? Our interest is in prevention. Why? Because so many times I notice that people, they go through life suffering from various mental health issues. Not just a year, but 10 years, but a lifetime of unhappiness. And our take on it was if we could use those three topics, music, movies, and sports, and the live streams breaking down various topics in more detail, it would give people a chance to say, wow, here's some information that can actually help me grow. So when the situation happens again, I know what to do and also how to avoid it. Okay. Now, why am I picking TBI today? All right. The reason why I'm picking it today is because it happens a lot more than you think. And though it's gotten a lot better it's still not really understood. We're slowly becoming more aware of it for two main reasons in the last probably 10, 15 years. One is the diagnosis with the talk of CTE, which stands for Chronic Traumatic Encephalopathy, okay, CTE, and the Iraqi War in which uh, there were hundreds, if not thousands, of IEDs exploded around soldiers, and they came back with traumatic brain injury. So from that, we've had a lot of interest from athletics and from war, which has put it into the public view. Now, this topic is extremely vast, extremely extensive, and um, just due to the time that I have, which is about an hour, I'm not going to give you a, a massive understanding of it. So I'm going to give you a brief overview, and I have a poster here that shows you what a brain looks like. So just real quickly, just so you understand where I'm coming from, and I'll break it down further as I talk. This is the side view. This is a cutaway view of the side. This is looking down on the brain, and this is looking under the brain. And the reason why there's different numbers is because it explains what different functions the brain provides from the different colors, and also, unless you cut away half the brain, you won't see certain parts of the brain that are hidden from the outside. Okay. The goal today is to shed information on this topic so that hopefully you can minimize your chances of getting one. And if, unfortunately, you do get one, you can understand better how to deal with it. It does not, and so it doesn't destroy you, your family, and those around you. Now, how am I going to explain this topic? I'm going to use facts. I'm going to clarify things and stories from those I have worked with in my career. And the topics are going to be what are the basis and the overview, how it affects kids, and what are we learning about those that are incarcerated, how does TBI affect them as well. And the goal is how can we avoid it and get it minimized. Now, first question I get all the time is, Bruce, if I have a traumatic brain injury, can I get it healed? Or can it just go away? All right. The human brain does not heal itself the way a muscle will, the way a tissue will, or a broken bone can. I had a broken elbow a few years ago, and it was a pretty bad break. And I had surgery, and even though due to my age, you, know, you don't heal as well as you would at the age of 20, I'm back to about 90, 95% of my mobility with my right arm, okay? Brain injury is not the same thing. 
because in many instances, the damage suffered from a TBI leaves permanent effects behind. It doesn't just go away like that. All right. TBI, traumatic brain injury, affects the roots of who we are. The ability to think, communicate, and connect with other people. When you think about that, that's pretty much 100% of what we do in, during the course of a day. When those things are compromised, we're cut in half, it gives you severe limitations. 85% of people with a TBI will eventually get it resolved in one form or another. It means they'll basically be able to go back having a functional life. But 15% are going to have lasting difficulties, which is a lot of people. Now, even doing this, we have to understand something. Doing this, bop, bop, tapping on the head, that's a problem. Okay, there's an issue to that. All right? A mild TBI, mild, okay, will give you daily headaches, agitated moods where you can't sleep. When you get a severe one, the problems are that much greater. Okay? You can't remember your name or you think you're somebody different. Wait, you said I'm Bruce? Nah, I'm not Bruce. I'm not Bruce. That's a severe TBI. CDC, okay, Center for Disease and Control in Atlanta's federal agency, that 5.3 million people live with a permanent disability. 2.8 million people report a TBI every year. And every 10 years, enough disabled people fill up the equivalent of the city of Detroit. All right, question is how many people live in Detroit? As of 2019, 675,000 people live in Detroit. So it's, you think about it, a lot of people every year, every decade, that's a lot of people. We have seven Detroits right now in this country of people with permanent disability. And a third of them are under the age of 14. Okay, why is that? Think about that. It's very simple. The explosion in youth sports, okay, particularly girls' soccer. So we didn't have girls playing sports the way we used to. Now we have many, 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 many girls playing soccer. And the, the greatest rise in concussions are girls doing headers, boom, and getting nailed in the coconut by another coconut. What's another huge sport here in Las Vegas, Nevada now is flag football for girls. That's going to lead to contact and you know, collisions. Girls basketball. So you've seen girls much, much, much more participation. And kids today are at a younger age participating in more and more organized sports. Hence, you got a rise in TBI. Okay, now, look at your skull like this. If you've got a quarter inch of bone protecting your skull, but look at it as a mohawk. Think of your skull as a mohawk. This part here, your frontal lobe, is more heavily armor plated. It's a bit thicker than the sides. If you think about it, it makes sense. If you get hit, you're going to, generally going to get popped here. You're not going to get popped on the sides. So that has to be a little bit thicker for it to be protected. So the top of this part, a little bit thicker. Okay. Now, men tend to get more concussions than women. Why? Because men are more active and more violent than women. But like everything else today in America, women are catching up because we're seeing a rise in women being aggressive in terms of fist fighting, throwing punches, MMA. These are all factors. So women are generally rising up and how they're getting more active, and you get more active, you get more violent, you have more TBIs. And what's another big factor is violence against women is so high that so many women are taking punches to the face from abusive boyfriends and husbands. So you're getting more and more women getting punched in the face, getting hit, leads to more TBIs. All right, three layers protect the brain. I'm not going to get into the different layers. Um, you can kind of see it in one of the pictures here, but that's okay. But three layers protect the brain from itself. And by the way, guys, for those that are watching, you know, I know you all hated science class in high school, getting a science lesson. So you get three layers that protect the brain. There's two types of head injuries. There is open head and closed head injuries. Open head is bad. Because where are you going to get an open head from? Bullets, baseball, okay? Baseball bat or a high-speed collision. Pieces get into the brain, and it's a difficult, difficult operation to try and save that brain. The brain will swell. The brain will bleed. The brain is not able to really function at that point. You've got to do a lot of surgery, and you're so nervous about touching a nerve or damaging further the brain. It's a very, very risky surgery. Now, the other one is called closed head. That is when you have this. You have the brain. Look at more. You can look at my coconut. And here's what happens. The greatest example is a baby. 
young baby, eight months old, mom is frustrated, she does this. You don't listen. You never shut up. I can't sleep. It's jostling back and forth. So what happens is it hit one side of the head, bed, and then it's going to reverberate back to the other side of the head, bed. That's a new brain. The brain is not yet formed. You're doing massive damage to that brain, and that's when you see that traumatic brain injury to children. And you got to know what you're looking for with that. But if I see a house where the kid is listless, not really moving, kind of lethargic, I'm like, uh, single mom, under a lot of stress, not a lot of money. That's something I've learned to look for. Now, um, and think of it like a, like a bowl of jello. Everyone's had jello in their life. You know, you go like this, back and forth, back and forth. That's what your brain looks like when it's getting slammed back and forth as well. All right. Now, what this does also, it creates a thing called shearing. And that leads to what's called an exonal injury. This is an important I want to kind of go, I want to kind of, you know, clarify what this means. You have axons in your brain, all right? So, like, look at the brain right here, and you see these little ridges and these little lines in here. There are millions and millions of nerve cells, I could, I could, hundreds of millions probably. I don't want to, you know, make, you know, get my biology facts correct. But here's the thing. When you start doing this, we're going with the brain back and forth, you start doing what's called tearing, okay? If they transmit the message, those fine hairs of those nerve cells are the ones that transmit messages back and forth. When you start to tear them, it gets mixed up, the message, where it doesn't come through at all. Imagine the example of this. Our brains are so complicated, just watching my producer slash everything set everything up is complicated. Like he's doing this, he's doing this. Bruce, I want you to stand here. I'm standing actually on a mark. I got my mic here. He gave me an order to get a black t-shirt. Okay. Um, he put this together. He wrote this down. We made sure to mention our sponsor. Um, you know, I put everything together. Even what I had to get done from last night to today was complicated. I had to have a, uh, you know, a concept A to B to C to D. When you, that's a six lane highway working in perfect formation. It's like you got a, you know, an SUV, 80 miles an hour, bam, 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 bam. Everything is flowing. But when you have the messages are all messed up now and the brain can't process and can't receive, it's like a six lane highway now to a country road on a bike, but you still need six lanes of traffic to go there. You get a massive traffic jam and the brain is now going to be overloaded. And that's going to lead to that anger, that frustration, that depression, that anxiety, because you can no longer process what you used to process and you get angry from it. Okay, now, people with TBI, it's a different, different world. It's one thing if you're like 70, 80 years old, you get a stroke. You know, you're in that danger age, you're in that zone. It's not like really shocking if you hear that someone got one. But a TBI, man, that gets real, okay? Because it goes like this. How does my injury really affect me? What can I do without my brain? And how can I make the most out of my life? Imagine you're a 22-year-old corporal coming back from Iraq, and you have um, violent seizures, and you have a traumatic brain injury from undiagnosed concussions, and they finally get you out and take care of you. Boom. Like, how do you handle now you're not going to be in the Army anymore? You're going to be discharged. What do you do? What do you tell your girlfriend? What do you tell your two-year-old daughter? You know, you're on disability the rest of your life. You can't function. You can't drive a car. You can't know. You can't remember where you got to go. For one thing, if you're 75, you live basically most of your life, if not all of your life. At 22, it's a completely different animal. And I've worked with people that had TBIs from beatings, from being shot, uh, from explosions, and they're not the same, and they're angry. They're bitter, they're frustrated, and they make the same mistakes over and over again. And from a therapeutic perspective, I'm talking to them like, don't do this, do this, try this, do that. They can't remember. They can't get that sequence going to be appropriate and make it work for them. And that's a massive problem. Okay, now, remember about a TBI is this also. Some symptoms are going to happen right away. You'll see it like very, very quickly. And some are going to take days, if not weeks, to come into passing. So just be aware that every head injury is very, very, very individualistic. Now, physical. Just for the interest of time, I'm only going to go over a couple of things and break them down real quick. 
You have loss of consciousness from a few seconds to a few minutes. You can have a headache, which can be, you have a headache, you also have vomiting, nausea, difficulty sleeping. You can have sensory problems, blurred vision, bad taste in mouth, sensitive to light and sound. Just looking on here, you understand the different, like number seven right here, okay? Sensory association area. Number seven is on this side. This part's affected by a brain injury. Again, top of the skull, you're going to have a problem with, you know, senses what's going on around you. Blurred vision, taste in mouth. Okay, sensitive to light and sound. Severe ones are going to be convulsions with seizures, ongoing, ongoing seizures. Numbness in your fingers and toes. Loss of coordination. I need help. My balance is off. And you have to learn to understand where that's coming from. Now, what are some of the main causes that we see from traumatic brain injuries? Falls from the elderly and from little children, because kids are learning how to, like this. You know, a little baby, you get this. Like, okay, mommy, daddy, I'm falling. They don't have that coordination yet. Elderly people, and that's another biggie. Vehicle-related collisions, all right? Violence. Domestic violence, child abuse, and shaken baby syndrome are common causes. Even in prison, when you talk to women, when you see, you read articles, the number of women that will say they've had violence done to them is generally about 80, 90 percent. So you have women that will say things like, well, when my boyfriend wanted to be intimate with me, he grabbed me, threw me against the wall, and uh, beat me, and then we were intimate. He forced himself on me. And they think that's a normal way to have a relationship. But that becomes the norm. And they take a lot of punishment. Or, yeah, my boyfriend, when he got angry, he broke my nose, he broke my finger, he gave me a black eye, he kicked me in the stomach. So there's a lot of violence towards women in a correction who, are, who find themselves in a correctional setting. Another thing, too, I notice for when you're talking about... Um, you know, violence, domestic violence, child abuse, child abuse, not just done, you know, by parents to children, like punch them, beat them, hit them, but I've had moms do this to me. I took him in 13, I was a single mom, and I picked him up, and I slammed him on the table, on a Formica table, or a wooden table, 13 years old, 12 years old, bam, 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 multiple concussions. No one is following up on this. So why is he messing up in school, walking out of class, walking off campus, not listening to teachers' instructions, being violent, being aggressive? Oh, he's oppositional defiant. He's antisocial. No, there's more to it than that. Another factor, too, is gangs. And any gang member watching this, understand what I'm talking about here. You have this, everyone, almost every gang has this philosophy of you got to get beaten in, you got to get beaten out. Well, you're already damaging your newest member by giving him probably a severe concussion by beating him in for like five minutes, with three, whatever how long the, you know, the initiation takes. Now, if you're in a gang also and you're doing a lot of fighting, you're a hitter, you're a fighter, fight after fight after fight after fight, so eventually you're going to have limited value to the gang because of those undiagnosed concussions. You're going to like, oh, I'm okay, I'm okay. Yeah, he knocked me out. Yeah, I, I tasted... Uh, Copper pennies in my mouth for 30 seconds. My fingers got numb. I couldn't smell anything for half a day. Those are the effects of long-standing concussions. So gang members, just be aware of this. When you get someone beaten in or he's constantly fighting, you are damaging that person, and his effectiveness as a gang member is going to go down over time. Just reality check there. All right. Now, another thing, sports injuries, girls' soccer. Biggie, girls are playing soccer in increasingly large numbers. Explosive blasts, other combat injuries. All right, another thing too, anyone you see in artillery 150 years ago, you'd see guys when they shoot off those cannons incredibly loud, you'd see guys start to do this, put their fingers in their ears. Now you see guys, anyone that does anything loud today, they have on those guards those ear guards to protect those ears. I was just saying before, when I was driving over here, I saw a fire truck drive past me. What's the driver wearing? Headphones. Keep those ears safe. You know, get the cancel out that noise. Big factor. They did a study. Guys who were in special forces and use live ammunition every single day to be on the you know peak. Forty seven. I think it was forty seven guys. Forty six had TBI. So they're even realizing the more ammunition you fire, the concussive power, those blasts are deadly. 
Now, what happened also? Pressure waves through the brain. Army uh, deployment gear to, for body armor today is fantastic. When they went to Iraq, they have it such a way that it protects the extremities. Why? Because that's where the blood flow. You don't want to have any damage down here because of the blood and the veins that go from the top to the bottom. So the gear was like this. You put it on, it was like almost like a second skin. Here's the problem, though. When they were traveling in those trucks and those IEDs and the bomb blasts would come up through the bottom, here's what would happen. It would come through a tiny opening, less than a pencil, like a pencil head. The, bla the force of that blast has to travel somewhere. So it would find an opening and go like this. Come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. Can't do anything here because everything is protected. It would go up, 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 up to the helmet. And this is what happened to the head. The head was getting damaged. What they had to do was they had to make pencil holes, like quarter size holes here and here, to get the blast out of that enclosed area so the head would be protected. They learned this from they learned this unfortunately from experience. But that's how good body armor is today. So we're not 100% sure where they're getting this from in terms of what the TBI is exactly doing, but we do know that that pressure wave through the brain has a huge impact. Now, here's another thing. I wanted to kind of really, we're doing good with time, I want to kind of really focus on a couple of key points, what I see with someone who has a TBI. You're going to see intellectual problems. Okay, we'll experience changes in their thinking, their cognitive skills how we think, how we process information. may be more difficult to focus and it takes longer to process your thoughts. And it can result in many problems, including cognitive problems, which come right here. Cognitive problems right here, the beginning of your brain, your frontal lobe. It's your memory, your reasoning, your attention or concentration. Man, what did you say yesterday? Wait, about the keys? What did you say? I don't remember. Reasoning. Huh? Wait, I gotta wait my turn? It's not fair. Wait a second. I gotta listen to you. Like lost, you know, you're not thinking, you're not reasoning clearly. Attention or concentration. I can't do this test. 30 questions? But you said three. You can't do 30. Concentration, you know, your, your, your attention is not there. Executive functioning comes again right here. Number 13, right here. The frontal lobe is the conductor of the brain orchestra. You need this piece. This is really the, one of the most valuable pieces that affects everything else about the brain. You have this issue, problem solving. Okay, wait a second. If I put the tape here, it'll hold up like, my, like what, my, what my agent was doing, my producer. does the, put the tape here, Bruce, pull this out. Bruce, wear the mic. What you have when you have problem solving, yeah, screw it, man. Who cares? Just do it. Just go do it. I don't care anymore. Okay, organization. That's a huge one. When you can't see somebody be organized, like, well, you know, I'm not going to blame women, but like, you know, with the pocketbook. Like, you know, did you take this with you? Did you forget this? Do you have this with you? You're not organized. You don't have your stuff with you. When I came over here to do the shoot, I had everything lined up, everything with the folders, Everything with the, with the paper clips, all the markers that I need to get marked. I organized my thoughts before I came here. Okay, decision making. Um, let me stop and get a drink so I'll come 15 minutes late for the shoot. No, that's not how you do it. Like, you got to think, what's the right decision? I can, wait, we're going to a whole food store, health store. I can get a drink at the health food store. Like, you, you, you focus your time and you be correct. So I'll give another example about that also, problem solving. My uh, producer has a gate code. And I used to have to go through the messages like, you know, to find it, find it, find it. I'm like, this is dumb. And I finally went and I took the message code, you know, to get into his complex. And I put it in his details. Now if I want to just remember it, boom, I go right to it. It saves me five minutes going up and down looking for it. And I can get in and go right to his house. But that's when you're thinking about, you know, decision making. Making the right decision. Not like... You, you, you better come to get me from the gate. Like, that's going to waste a lot of time. Not thinking clearly. Beginning with completing tasks. A to B to C to D. Bruce, be at my house at 1.15. Bring what you need. We'll drive to the store. We can go together. 
It's only two minutes away. Right, you're thinking how you're going to handle that kind of stuff. Communication problems. That's another one you're going to see. All right, and they may include cognitive. You notice how it always goes back to, again, the cognitive functioning. Okay, higher mental functions, number 13. Concentration, planning, judgment, emotional expression, creativity, inhibition. It means it stops you from doing dumb things. So cognitive problems. Difficulty understanding speech or writing. Difficulty speaking or writing. Um, I'm, I'm Bruce. I'm Bruce, and I, I do this. Um, yeah, how you doing? Um, um, yeah, I, I work with people. Okay, you're not, you're not, you're not clear on how you're speaking. All right, trouble following or participating in conversations. Yeah, um, who won the game on Sunday? The Super Bowl game? The baseball game? You're not clear. You're not making sense. Okay, then you're going to see social problems, all right? Problems with changes in tone, pitch, or emphasis to express emotions, attitudes, or subtle differences in meaning. Okay, listen, shh. You got it. Like you got to calm down. You can't yell in the movie theater. Why can't I yell in the movie theater for? What's your problem? I don't care. Like, no, you, you can't do that. You, you, you can't do. That. I don't understand what your problem is. Talk louder. Ruin it for everybody else. Okay. Trouble reading cues from listeners. Like Bruce. Like sometimes what my producer will do is he'll go like Bruce. Like up. Get your chin up. He'll do this, get your hands off the table. He'll say, go like this, stay at your mark. These are non-verbal cues, which we live off of. We all do that kind of stuff. I'm sure his girlfriend will sometimes say to him, uh, shh, stop talking so much, listen to me. You know, loving relationship. I know my wife does that to me all the time. But when you're not picking up on that stuff, you're not getting the cues from what's going on around you. What? 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 Why, why can't I talk? keep on talking? What's wrong? All right? Trouble stopping or starting conversations. I'm not finished yet. I'm not. No, no. I got another point I got to say. Like, no, no. We were done five minutes ago. You got to get back to work. All right. Behavioral changes. Difficulty with self control. You get the idea. If your brain is not functional, the idea of like waiting your turn, um, letting a waiter take five extra minutes to come to you. You're in the checkout line. The woman says, hey, can you do me a favor? I got to take care of this other customer first. There's a problem with like the checkout. What do you mean I got to wait? You start losing. You start getting angry. People are waiting, you know, going on to a Disney ride. Get crazy. All right. Lack of awareness or abilities. You don't realize what you can and can't do. I can jump off that diving board 20 feet in the air. Uh, you did in college. You're 50 years old now. You really can't do that. They don't understand what they can and can't do. Risky behavior. Yeah. Yeah. You looking at me? That's why whenever you hear people say, I go to bars a lot, get into a lot of fights, okay, alcohol, an inhibitor, you know, you get confidence, you know, you add in some drugs, all of a sudden, yeah, she's with me. Well, she came with me. Yeah, you got a problem with that? Out comes the gun, out comes the knife, out comes the fist, and out comes problems with law enforcement, and you're going to get arrested. Okay, difficulty in social situations. Hi, my, uh, you know, I met someone. Pleasant. Oh, you're married to him? Okay. No, nah, good. Nice to meet you. It's very good. I'm going to hit on you. Let's go out to dinner. You know, are you free tonight? No, I'm married with three children. Like, you don't understand the social situations where someone's telling you they don't like this and you keep on making jokes that are inappropriate. Verbal or physical outbursts. Yeah, that's a given because your brain is not handling when you should calm down. Yeah, officer, what'd you say to me? Give you my license? How about I give you my fist across your mouth? Boom. Trouble. You're going to get a simple traffic stop. Now becomes an arrest and a court record. Emotional changes. This is another biggie. Depression. Anxiety. I know I'm not doing things right. I don't know what's wrong with me. Okay. Mood swings. Up and down. Up and down. Up and down. Irritable. Angry. Lack of empathy for others. Oh, wait. You're seven months pregnant and you can't walk up the mountain with me today? And we get a great exercise. You wanted to get some exercise. What's wrong with you? <sighs> Honey, it's a little steep for me. I need to kind of just catch my breath, maybe only go halfway. What's wrong? What are you? You don't want to have fun with me? Lack of empathy. Anger. And then another biggie is insomnia. Okay, real quick. I say this all the time. How many Americans do not sleep well at night? Raise my hand. I don't. 
60 million of us do not sleep well at night. Insomnia is a massive problem in this country for a lot of different reasons. Then you're going to have your sensory problems. Okay, persistent ringing in the ears. Not, wait, what was that again? What was that? That was the house? I don't recognize my house. I was re reading about this uh, former NFL football player. He said that at night he couldn't find his house. When I moved to Vegas, I realized how many of the houses were, were the same. I thought if you're an alcoholic and you know, you're coming home after like drinking heavily, you're going to get lost in your neighborhood because all the houses look so identical. You can't remember where, what neighborhood you live in. He would drive around his neighborhood and go like, he'd have to say, honey, can you come get me? I can't find the house. Merrill Hodge, he was, a, he was a fullback for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he said, I could not find my house. My wife had to come help me. Impaired hand-eye coordination. Well, again, the brain is affected. That hand-eye, okay, that's going to affect how you handle things. And uh, generally, da, 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 6, 8, 14, 6, 8, smelling, and 14. Motor functions, right here. Mo movement, balance, and equilibrium, and posture right here, right by the brain stem. You have to, like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so you gotta be aware of that. Now, who is likely to get a traumatic brain injury? Who's most likely to be affected? Children, we talked about why newborns, they fall a lot, they, they're clumsy, they don't have a lot of good muscle coordination in their legs yet. Young adults, 15 to 24, we explained about that. Gang violence, a lot of uh, domestic violence that they're exposed to. Even screaming, by the way, uh, I didn't want to get into it another time, but even if you scream at your kids, used to be if you didn't hit your kids, if you didn't hit your wife in front of your kids, you just yelled at her, oh, the kids are not affected. Wrong. If you yell at your kids in front of your wife, like just yelling at your wife, screaming, their level of like nervousness goes up like for six hours. It takes six hours for them to calm down. That's how severe it is when you yell at your children. Those of you that like have a temper, Get help for it now because your kids are going to be affected. Well, he never hit mommy. She never really punched dad. She just threw things at him. <laughs> it affects the children. It affects very young children for a very, very long time. So don't even raise your voice because young brains are still growing. The brain doesn't stop growing to like 20 in the early 20s. He's still growing and turning how to learn how to handle yourself. Okay, adults 60 and over, common sense. They fall a lot. That's why you see now in hospitals... It's a big deal now with fall guards. Rubber grips coming out of the bathroom. Rubber grips on the side of the hallway. They can grab onto things. You know, just so they don't fall down a lot. Males in every age group are affected. And again, keep your hands off your kids. If you start shaking them, battering them, punching them, knocking them down, boom, head injury. Okay, traumatic brain injury, that kid. It affects the brain, okay? Another thing, too, I want to realize this also. Um, you get physical complications. You get the seizures, you get blood vessel damage, and you get dizziness. There's also, there's also physical factors. Now, if a little kid, I want to go over this real quick. What are the things you need to know about children under the age of four if they have a TBI? And as like I said, going to so many homes, they've gotten so much more acute at looking at this kind of stuff. Is there changes in their eating where they're nursing? Where well, they used to nurse five times a day, six times a day. Now they're like, they're lethargic. They're not really nursing. They're not really eating. Easily get irritable. Yeah, of course, all kids have that. But if it's like chronic, you can't tickle them. You can't make them giggle. You can't make them smile. Something's not right. Are they crying all the time? Because they're in distress, right? Are they crying all the time? Is there a change in the ability to pay attention? Look at me. Look at me. Look at daddy. Look at daddy. Look at daddy. Come over. Smile. Give me a kiss. They can't do that. Something's not right. Do they sleep all day? Don't sleep anymore. Are there seizures? Okay. Are they in a sad with depressed mood? Most babies should, like, you'll see every, every grandparent has on their phone 800 pictures of their grandkids smiling. Look, 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 look. They're not smiling. There's something wrong there. Drowsiness, always with the head rolling back, and loss of interest in favorite toys or activities. So here's the message, okay? When do you see a doctor? When you need to, all right? 
anytime you got a blow to the head, all right, you, it's either you or you, yourself as the adult or even as a child, you take the kid to a doctor. And if there are any symptoms or uh, signs of TBI, of any traumatic injury to the head, you go to the ER. You do not wait. The sooner you get it resolved, the better off you're going to be. Now, okay, I've had families tell me this, Bruce, what do I do? I'm insanely worried about my kid with six years old, had a traumatic brain injury. Where do we go from here as a family? I had dreams of him becoming an uh, NBA player or playing baseball like me. And now all of a sudden, he doesn't do anything. He just sits around the house. He cries a lot. He's very depressed. He's, he's unhappy. Gets into a lot of fights. They're saying, this is just in general also, kids with TBI symptoms, if the family, if they grow up in a supportive family environment, which is easier said than done. I get it. I've, I've, I've gone to those houses and it's wrenching. The mom is sobbing hysterically. The dad's drinking. There's a lot of tension in the house because their seven-year-old son was in a car accident, went through a windshield, and then we're going to be the same again. And I get it. Okay? But if you go up in a chaotic family, the odds of the person getting better is going to go down because you're not in control. And again, it's easier said than done. As a parent and as the adult in a situation, you have to be the mature person in the family. You got to be supporting, supportive, and loving, even when you're freaked out and terrified. You can't be like, "What's wrong with you? Why are you not doing it? Your brother broke his arm, and he was back in four months. Why don't you pick up a baseball bat again? Why aren't you studying? Why aren't you read? Why aren't you painting?" The kid knows he's wrong. The kid knows he's damaged. Not stupid. All you're going to do is make the kid feel even worse over time. You're the adult. That's it in general. You know, better, you, know, be, you know, understand that you're the parent. Better the parent, better the outcome. Now, people will say in corrections about 60% of inmates have TBI. And there's a lot of talk from researchers. Why? Okay. Here's, they're not sure why, but they give some answers. Lots of fights before. You grow up in a chaotic life. Gang banging, uh, you know, robbery, violence, uh, family was never functional. You fight with your dad, you fight with your stepdad, you fight with your stepmother, you fight with your mother. So you have a lots and lots and lots of fights, okay? Now, also, a lot of times in these families, they never diagnose the fact that you got hit. I've had hundreds of kids tell me, yeah, when I was fighting, when I was in the gang, I used to fight, I was one of the fighters. I used to have three, four fights a week. Sometimes I knocked the kid out, sometimes he'd knock me out. Uh, I didn't think anything of it. Or I play football, get knocked out. Oh, coach says come back in in five plays. Or I was a boxer and I was in a fight with 14, got knocked out, and I fought again the next week. I wasn't really kind of conscious of what I was doing. You talk to wrestlers and they'll say this to you. When you get thrown on your head, when you get slammed to the ground, you're not going to win that match because your brain is like just trying to make sense of what the heck just happened to it. So that's a lot of times that's what's happening. And they grew up in dysfunctional families where it was normal to hit each other. Boom, boom, boom. I don't like what you said. Boom, smack you around. Throw you against the wall. Beat up your mom. Throw something at your father. Stab your dad. Shoot people. Normal, normal, normal relationships. Family functions. Everyone goes at each other's throats. Ha, 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 ha. Not selling anything with words, but using violence. Okay. Substance abuse that's chronic. When you take, you know, methamphetamine for 20, 30 years, and I've seen this, okay, affects the brain. You drink 20, 30 years, it affects the brain. Okay, you're not thinking clearly. So outbursts are more likely to come, and you get more in contact with law enforcement. If I'm fighting in the store and losing my mind and getting out of control, they're going to call the police. Makes common sense, okay? And you have multiple traumatic brain injuries. So result, these inmates, and it, you know, they struggle because it's a confined setting, regimented. They have problems following directions. All right, behaving appropriately, having rapid mood swings, and dealing with a lot of depression and anxiety. So what have they found that works well? And I've done a lot of teaching in correctional settings with officers and how to work better with inmates that suffer from this. And this is general across the board anyway when you're working with somebody with a TBI. Here's what you got to think about. Talk slowly and pause between ideas and topics. Okay, let's go on to the next thing. Rapid fire, too much stimulus for the brain. Use concrete examples. Three o'clock tomorrow, the truck comes in, 
we have to unload it. Three o'clock Tuesday, the truck comes in, we have to unload concrete, okay? Break information to small chunks and repeat it until the person gets it. Again, three o'clock tomorrow, the 20 foot truck comes into the back of the store, we have to unload it. You got it? Okay, you do that several times. You ask what they call clarifying open-ended questions versus closed-end questions. Tell me what you understand, okay? What do you understand, okay? Rather than, do you understand? Do you understand? What do you understand versus, do you understand? Do you understand? Because you're going to find that they don't know what they're talking about. As much as possible, this is in general too, use a calm, low voice. When you scream and you put your finger in somebody's face and you do this and you start doing the threatening talk and the tough guy talk, even with people that don't have a traumatic brain injury, they tune you out within like 30 seconds. They're like, let this idiot talk till they get tired and then I'm just going to walk away and I remember what they said to begin with. Calm, low voice. People that scream and shout think they're being good leaders. Wrong. Not true. When you talk in a calm, low voice, you get the person's attention way, way better than losing control. I do this with parents all the time. Don't, like, you're not gonna, don't be a tough guy when you don't have to be a tough guy. Try and be in control. If you can, they do this in prisons, but just in general also, don't rip somebody on the shop floor like in front of all the customers. People like to do that sometimes also. You know what I think of you? Your behavior. I could get you fired. You know what you're doing. And everyone's walking by and like looking. That happened to me. It sucked. If you say, can I talk to you privately? Come to my office. Come to the back. Come to a quiet area. You're much more likely to be effective. This is, they find us to work well in prisons, but it's really a good preamble how to work well in life in general anyway. Okay? All right. I'm going to go through a couple of last things real, real quick, and we're going we're gonna to be done with the topic. A couple of things. Um, I didn't get a chance. I wanted to go over this. Larry Johnson and Dr. Bennett Omalu. Dr. Bennett Omalu was played by Will Smith in Concussion. Okay, fine. And Larry Johnson was a running back, who, one of my favorite running backs, by the way, who played for the Kansas City Chiefs in the early 2000s. Great, bruising running back. He holds the NFL record the most carries in one season, I think 416. He's like 38. He's not like. He is 38 years old right now, and he says, my life is a mess. I had so many concussions trying to please my dad as a football player that numerous brushes with the law, huge contract, the money's basically gone, constant anger, frustration, suicidal thoughts. Because the one thing that's keeping him sane is his young daughter who's about seven years old, and he has custody of her, like I think on, uh, like on weekends, and he gets to bring her back to her mom uh, during the week. There's a lot of comments in the article about, you know, does he deserve it? Is it his fault? I'm not going to argue, you know, get into that part. But clearly something happened to him. And playing the way he played from a very, very early age, he remembers his first concussion at nine years old, and he probably had dozens of them, did something to his brain. Has he made tremendous mistakes? Has he had a lot of issues with his own anger? Of course, we get that. But when you start understanding what TBI is and how it affects the brain, there's something that needs to be addressed here. Now, Bennett Omalu, he was the doctor that was played by Will Smith that said, it's the truth, tell the truth, that famous line in the movie. He's come under fire because they're saying that his version of CTE is not realistic compared to what research is showing. That he's saying that you can, dis you can diagnose it now, or they're saying you have to first be dead so they can open up your brain in slices and look through it through a microscope and look for certain proteins that are, you know, that are dangerous. But not every protein in a certain, like my age, I'm already going to have a certain kind of protein called tau. So it's, it's not so clear anymore about his information. And where did this come from, this whole concept? It came from a thing called punch drunk, like from the 20s, when they noticed that fighters back then were not regulated in boxing, were fighting over and over and over again. And they used to call them like tomato cans because they would bleed and get knocked out. because They needed money, fight again in a month. There was no break. So they noticed doctors that these guys who fought 80, 90, 100 times, and back then it was 15 rounds for a fight, not 12 like it is today, were showing signs a lot of TBI. So this is a field that's still growing tremendously in a lot, a lot of different areas, 
and a lot of different perspectives on how to really understand what it is. Here's the thing, though. It's not going away. And, I, and I'll close with this. I did a class for correctional cadets about, I think, about a year ago, about 50 of them. And I raised my hand, the guy who was doing I said, he said, has anyone here either had or know someone that had a traumatic brain injury after the class that we had broken down it over and over and over again? Out of, I counted. Out of 50 cadets, 10 of them raised their hand and said, I knew someone or it happened to me where they had a traumatic brain injury, either from war, they were overseas, whether it was an accident in high school, someone knocked their head on a rock going swimming, uh, a bike accident, and it affected how they lived the rest of their life. Now, some made a recovery and were able to get back to life. Some did not, and some ended up, um, unfortunately, um, having a very dreadful life. But it was interesting how many people, I didn't realize how many people share with us openly about TBI issues that happened to them or their family or to their friends and what it did to them. And on a break, several of them came up to me and shared with, the, with them, with me, about their own issues in their own family. So it's way more pervasive and way more out there than people realize. The goal is this. Try and minimize it happening to you. It goes back to families over and over and over again. We stress prevention. Be an appropriate parent. If you're having anger issues, get help for it before you lose it on your children. Don't shake a child. Don't batter your wife in front of your kids. Don't batter your wife or girlfriend at all. And by all means, don't batter your kid. They're affected by all this craziness that they see. All right? Be careful what you get yourself involved in. Being in a gang seems really cool, but if at 30 years old you can't find your way to the bathroom and you're getting out locked up over and over again, Maybe there's a cause and effect here. Think about what you're joining. Keep your coconut as safe as possible. Wear a safety belt. Wear a seat belt. Wear a helmet. Protect yourself. There's huge issues about football. I can go on and on about football and what the state of football is going to be in the next 20 years. I don't know. It won't be the same in 2040 as it is in 2020. This field is growing. It's not going to stop. There's going to be more and more research. The goal of this lecture today was to give you understanding of what to be aware of and to appreciate just how marvelous the brain is and what it can do and realize how many things are affected. Just number six. Okay, just real quick. That is your fight or flight area. Number eight, right here. Okay, what is that control? You're smelling. Notice it's right behind the front the lobe. If that gets smashed, that's why people will say, I don't smell them. I'm having a problem smelling. Okay, number 14, motor functions right here. Get that bad concussion. My gate's off. I'm not thinking clearly. Number two, association area right here. Short-term memory. We remember things from there, okay? Equilibrium and emotional issues. Where is it right behind? Front the lobe. And, of course, number 13, the big boy right here. Concentration, planning, judgment, emotions, creativity, and inhibitions. It's all connected. All right. Um, I don't think we have any questions right now, so we're going to close here. I want to thank everybody for watching. Again, Bruce Moffson, LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada. And I want to thank Natural Grocers, good for you, and much appreciated. Bruce, i got a question. For um, parents that have kids... Um, under the age of 13, would you recommend that they allow their kids to play contact sports? No. My kid played sports, and I was grateful he did track and field, and he did wrestling. And even then, I saw his head get slammed a couple of times to the mat. And he said, boy, my, you know, my bell got rung. I saw guys get picked up and slammed even on a high school level. They're that good. Athletes today are just a completely different level. They're even making laws now that they're trying to say that until the age of seventh grade, there should not be contact in, in football. No hitting. So, and by the way, the, the participation in youth football is doing this. Because parents don't want their kids anymore to be in a contact sport that could have detrimental effects for them when they get to be older. So it's a factor. Anything else I can answer? Oh, okay. Are some of these injuries No. Um, once you have a traumatic brain injury, 85% um, of the people that do have a concussion will generally be mild, so to speak. So 
let's say you're playing uh, high school soccer and you go to head a ball with another teammate and you both connect and you know you knock your coconuts. Today we know concussion protocol. You don't play for a week. You know you get seen by a doctor or hopefully a decent athletic trainer. You you know you stay home. You don't practice. You don't do extra stress on your brain. And generally, within a week, we'll see like a brain scan, like, like all jumbled the first day after. A week later, it's pretty much back to normal. Go back to playing. Okay. Um, but if you have a severe, but if you're playing again and again and you're getting multiple concussions, bed. You can't, you, you got to have, you got to have that break. And that's why in the NFL today, in college football, in high school football, if they say you got a concussion, it's like, I think like a game minimum, you do not play. You have to get that brain to heal. You don't practice because you're putting extra stress on the brain. So if you don't do that and you have prolonged exposure to concussions, it's going to be lifelong and lasting. I think we are good here. Thank you, thank you, thank you again. Summage of Nevada. Uh, appreciate doing the lecture today. And want to thank again Natural Grocers. Good for you in giving us their lecture room. And much, much, much appreciated. Thanks, guys.